Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. Powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. And I got a rant to talk about right now. But before we jump on in, let me thank you all so much for your continued support of our channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Be, become a member of Come On Now, the podcast family. And jump on over to my other channel, Rudy's Rant, on YouTube and subscribe there as well. Let's jump on in on topic at hand. I'm going to preview the Miami Hurricanes, Florida State Seminoles rivalry game that takes place tomorrow night at the Hard Rock Stadium in Miami Gardens, Florida. People think it's in Miami. It's not in Miami. It's in a city called Miami Gardens, northern, northwest Dade County. But, of course, Miami Hurricanes, Miami Hurricanes play about 30 miles from their school which is why attendance is always so difficult for students because, quite frankly, that's a long-ass trip. And even if they take buses over there, they don't really want to drive that to get over there. So, But this is a rivalry game. And even though, I mean, it's a rivalry game, but Miami comes in at 7-0, and ranks 6th in the country. Florida State, I tell you, man, I, 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 it is crazy what happened to Florida State. 13-0 and last year. And this year they are one and six with their only win going being against Cal. They went 14 to nine on their home field. Florida State sucks. It, it, it is mind blowing to me what happened to Florida State. This is a rivalry game, but and don't let anyone fool you. This is going to be an absolute slaughter fest. People are going to come and say, oh, it's a rivalry game. You just don't understand. I'm a Hurricanes fan. I understand quite well. I understood two years ago when I expected Miami to get bludgeoned, and they got bludgeoned. I, last year, I I thought Miami would get whipped last year too, but I think we also n- knew that FSU offensively wasn't elite. Um, They were really good. But Miami also probably played one of their better games of the season in Tallahassee with a backup quarterback in Emory Williams rather than Tyler Van Dyke. Had Tyler Van Dyke played that game, I think Miami could have won that game, actually. But it didn't happen. Marcus Ball chose to roll with Emory Williams, which I thought was a catastrophic mistake. And then, of course, ends up having to go to Tyler Van Dyke in the final two minutes of the game because Emory Williams' arm gets busted. All that said, Miami is rolling. I mean, they've had three straight close games. They put up 52 at Louisville. They put up 39 at Cal. They put up 38 against Virginia Tech. Miami scores a lot of points this year. Cam Ward is a next-level quarterback. I mean, he's he's the best quarterback in the country. I don't give a shit what you say about anybody. He is the best quarterback in the country. Whether or not he gets drafted as the first quarterback in the draft next year, it remains to be seen. But he is absolutely sensational. Um, he might make a mistake here and there because he likes to take chances. But overall, I mean, Cam is is calm, cool, collected. I know that's cliche as hell, but it's what it is. I mean, this guy has brought Miami back from, you know, two deficits. And then even last week, it's 38-38. And uh, Miami go, ends up going up 52-38. to 38, And before, before you know, Louisville makes it 52-45 to 45 in the last minute of the game. What do look? What do we look for? We look for. I mean, FSU can't score. That's really the problem. It's not that their defense is so bad. It's that they cannot score. If you look at their their games, I mean, their last game they lost at Duke, twenty three to sixteen. Week before versus Clemson at home, twenty nine thirteen. Now the one game where they got beat up pretty good was at SMU, forty two to sixteen. SMU is a good team. They beat Cal 14-9. They lose to Memphis 20-12. They lose to BC 28-13. They lose the the opener to Georgia Tech 24-21. They've been rolling with Brock Glenn the last two games. I mean, he didn't do much of anything last week. He only threw for 110 yards, uh, 9 of 19. Nothing nothing special, obviously. Uh, But Duke didn't do anything at all. Duke had 180 yards of offense and scored 23 points. That is, uh, that's something, <laughs> you know, 
uh, Brock Glenn did throw two touch two interceptions, and one of those interceptions went for a touchdown. So that obviously makes a difference. And FSU's only touchdown last week was a kickoff return. So you have a situation where you have a, an offensively inept team that can basically only score <laughs> in, in miraculous ways. But when you look at what they've done this year, they just can't score points. I thought they made a massive mistake not using Brock Glenn to start the season. I thought he should have been the starter. I think they would have won some games had he been the starter to start the year. I think DJ Uyunglele was atrocious. I thought he was bad coming in. I didn't think I thought it was a major mistake on their part, but that's who they rolled with. And until he got hurt, that was their quarterback. I mean, if you look at the the game in which Brock Glenn played, um, did he come in in that SMU game? I don't think so. Well, let me make sure. He threw four passes. Okay, so it was the it was the Clemson game. The Clemson game I saw, and, he, and they had a whole bunch of drop passes. He was 23 of 41, two touchdowns, one pick, 228. But they dropped a bunch of passes. And, and I mean, I've talked to some Florida State friends of mine, and, and they're like, these guys just can't catch. It's crazy. I mean, you know, I know they lost, you know, uh, their, their big-time receivers last year, uh, Keon Coleman and, and was it Jimmy Johnny Wilson. But they just can't catch the ball. And in that game, I mean, I th- if I recall correctly, I mean, you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I know there was a one ball that was thrown, a couple balls thrown deep that just hit guys right in the chest and they dropped them. At least one that was thrown deep that hit guy in the chest and probably should have been a touchdown. SMU wa- waxed that ass. The Cal game, I mean, realistically, they got lucky as hell against Cal because, I mean, their quarterback Mendoza threw for 303 in that game. They just couldn't punch it in the end zone. They lived on field goals, and I think they missed a couple of field goals, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. They, let's see here. They, uh, yeah, they missed two field goals. That's your ball game. They would have lost the game 15 to to 14 had they made had Cal made all their field goals. And I know people will say you you want a scoreboard watch and you want to compare compare you know the Cal game against Miami to the FSU versus Miami FSU versus Cal. I think by now we can we can acknowledge that scoreboard watching is a joke, and, and I do and I think Cal's a good team actually, and I think FSU got a great win by beating them because Cal is, has lost four straight, but those four straight losses are by a combined nine total points. They lost to Virginia Tech by one, they lost to Miami by one, they lost to FSU by five, and they lost to whoever the other game was by two. So they're actually a pretty good team, and it shows that FSU can compete at some level if the other team cannot score. And that's where the reality comes into play. Miami's going to score, and Miami's going to score a lot. And it doesn't matter who Miami plays this year in this regular season schedule and potentially even into the ACC championship game. They're going to score on everybody. The question for Miami is very, very simple. Will they give up big plays? And they have this 10 tendency to give up big plays and that is the only thing that gives fsu any semblance of hope is that they hope miami misses tackles as they've done every week since the since the virginia tech game over pursues doesn't keep assignments is undisciplined and this is all on defense this is all defense and if Cam Ward does not throw any interceptions and does and we do and Miami does not turn the ball over. FSU has about as much chance of winning this game as I do of dunking a basketball, and that is never going to happen unless I'm standing on a ladder. So this is basically a very simple scenario for Miami. Don't give up the big play, and you're going to win by 40. Miami is a 21 point favorite. They move the ball at will on everyone. I mean, you've seen it the last few weeks. I, uh, the game against Louisville, I mean, my goodness, 52 points. They, and they needed every one of them. Cam Ward is thrown for over 300 yards in every game. I mean, he's last week, five touchdown passes, 13, 19 for 28, 346. I mean, this is this guy's incredible. I mean, that's, I'm sorry, that's the wrong game. My apology. That's the Why did that come up? I'm sorry, last week he was 321 for 32, 319, four touchdowns. You know, and uh, Martinez had a big game late late in that game, that big touchdown run. So Mark Fletcher had a good game. I mean, so you have a, a, a Miami has a balanced offense that can run the ball. They ran the ball 40 times in that game. 
What do you take away the seven from Cam? I mean, Cam runs once in a while, so 33 carries to running backs. They're very balanced on offense. End of the day, this is going to be a wipeout. And I will say as a Miami Hurricanes fan, I am I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed because I thought FSU would be good this year. I mean, I think everyone did. I don't know that anyone could have predicted, even with DJ Uyunglele, that they would be one and six right now. I, like, I, you couldn't have told me that. He was still eight and four at, at Oregon State last year. So I, I would never have predicted that they would be this bad. Did I think they would be elite? No, I didn't, because I think he sucks. But at this level, for them to be one and six, to be one of the worst teams in the country after going 13 and 0, I mean, I'm ignoring the Georgia game because they didn't have any players. It's crazy to me. It's absolutely nuts. And I think Mike Norvell has been way too stubborn. He, I don't know what he was, what he did in this offseason. I'm not an FSU expert, but the to not go with Brock Glenn made no sense. To let Tate Roadmaker leave made no sense. I think they both do that. I mean, I think Roadmaker knew that basically, or Rodmaker knew that he wasn't going to be the starter. And that's why he left. Because if you'd given him a, a real opportunity and said, look, you have a chance to start, you got to win the job. I don't think he leaves. I don't think he leaves. You know, when you look at the, at the situation with FSU in this game, I mean, if you look at who they have that came back on offense, none of the, I mean, they have basically nobody that can, no one that came back who did anything against Miami last year. I mean, when I'm looking at this re- report, the only, got, only yard contributors from the game last year were Lawrence Toafili, who had nine rushing yards. He's a good running back. Ja'Kai Douglas, he had three catches for 69 yards, and tight end Kyle Morlock, who had one catch for 11 yards. It's awful. <laughs> I mean, that's awful. And, and even... You know, Toa Feely's not having the same success he had last year. I mean, he's a he's a good back. He's not a great back. He's a good back. But it's it's uh it's pretty it's pretty it's wild, man. It's wild to see how FSU was falling into the toilet. Now, what I'm upset about overall is the fact this game is at night. Don't waste my night on this bullshit. I have tickets. I'm going to the game. It's my son's birthday weekend. I'm gonna take him take my both of my sons to the game. Like this wasn't it was supposed to be like the the reason I bought these season tickets this year for where we're sitting is to go to this game and 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 start getting my sons to be in that you know be trying to push them into that hurricane mode because I I grew up a hurricane fan and I, and I want them to but it's hard to when when the team is so bad for so many years and um yeah so I, I was hoping FSU would be good I mean I'm not saying they needed to be seven and zero oh, but God five and two four and three fuck <laughs> one and six is just brutal. One and six is brutal. At least if they were four and three or five and two, you say, okay, this this is gonna be a game. But one and six, if Miami wins this by less than forty, I think it's gonna be a disappointing game. I think Miami should absolutely annihilate this team. That's presuming that they don't give up stupid big plays and make dumb decisions and and, and over pursue and miss tackles and get beat on on. What the hell is this guy's name? I mean, I, I, let me let me look at his name real real quick. There's a couple of guys that just seem to always be on the wrong end of of getting burnt for Miami. Um, uh, where is it? Right here. Oh, I'm looking at this. They, they separated by defense and offense. Um, Jaden Harris. He's a sophomore. This guy gets smoked so many damn times. It's painful. My goodness. Jaden Harris is is always on the wrong end of it. It's seemingly all the time. He's one. Another one that steps out. Jadice Richard. Uh, another one. Always. Uh, he's a junior out of Louisiana. I mean, this, this guy always seems to be on the wrong end of it. These two guys in particular seem to be on the wrong end of getting smoked more often than not. And it's very concerning. I mean, you got you got some decent ones, but those two in particular... Deone Hill, another one that I've seen get be on the wrong end of a few of these damn big plays. You've got to tackle, bro. Like, you have got to tackle. It is not a complicated thing. Make the goddamn tackle. Don't get beat deep and make the damn tackle. I mean, stop biting on shit. It's ridiculous. It looks like they've never watched film. It's like they never watched film. 
And look, end of the day, defensive line has got to put pressure. If the defensive line dominates, Miami's going to win this game by a truckload. Going to win by a truckload. Don't commit the dumb penalties. It's it's just it's simple football. This is not supposed to be a competitive game. This their Miami's a 21 point favorite. I can't remember the last time Miami was a 21 point favorite ever in against Florida State. And they probably should be a bigger favorite than that if you want to be completely honest. But Vegas is taking that perspective of this is a rivalry game. Yeah, whatever. I would my prediction right here. 59 17, 55 10, something like that. It'll be in that range. It's in that range. I think FSU will get a, get a will score at least one touchdown. Don't know how it'll be. Probably be a big play because Miami freaking missing an assignment and get burnt deep or burnt on a stupid screen that goes for 80 yards. What you cannot allow to happen in that first quarter, though, is give these guys any type of confidence. You cannot give them big plays. You cannot allow to happen what would happen in Cal to happen here. You cannot do that. If that happens, you play with fire. You play with fire and you lose this game to Florida State. Any, forget about it. It's over. Like, <laughs> that's that'll be Florida State Super Bowl. National championship game right there. You can't mess around in this game. You got to come out focused, dialed in, locked in, and ready to pounce and destroy them and take them out in the first 15 minutes. Don't give them any hope whatsoever. But yeah, I think I'm really pissed off. This game is at night. This game should be at 12 noon, 3:30 at at worst. 7 p.m. start is ridiculous for a game like this. Yes, if they were both 7 and 0 and 5 and 2 or some 7 and 0 and 5 and 3 or 7 and 0 and 6 and 1, absolutely night game. Cool. You got it. I got you. Even though I hate night games, I would prefer they play at 12 noon. Most I would play. I would prefer they play at 12 noon because it doesn't steal my entire Saturday night. But to have a night game with a team that's getting mauled pretty much every week doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And I don't want to hear that people are going to watch this because no one's going to watch this game outside of Miami and Miami fans. Because I don't even think Florida State fans are going to watch this. My wife is a Florida State graduate. She does not plan on watching this crap. In fact, she's not even going to come with me to the game because she doesn't want to. It's not worth it for her. She doesn't want to listen to me cheering. But yeah, that's my thought. Those are my thoughts on this game. I think Cam Ward's going to throw for probably 300, 350. Um, and uh, it'll be a dominating performance by the Hurricanes. And uh, we shall see. We'll be, eight, you know, I presume Miami will be 8-0 uh, after tomorrow night. And then you'll have to wrap up the season with Duke, Georgia Tech, Wake Forest, and Syracuse. Syracuse is a good team on the road. I mean, I know they just got blown out of the building by Pittsburgh because Kyle McCord was playing pitch, you know, <laughs> playing catch with the uh, with the uh, Pitt DBs. And Georgia Tech always gives Miami headaches. Always. That game is in Atlanta. Always a headache, headache to play. And then, of course, Duke next weekend. Duke just beat Florida State. Duke is actually pretty good this year. They're six and one. Yeah, they're six and one. Only loss was Georgia Tech. They play SMU tomorrow, which will be a big game for them. Manny Diaz, former Hurricanes head coach, is the coach of Duke. So that will have some personal feelings involved in it. That will be next Saturday in Miami. Please don't be at night. Play that game in the daytime, folks. I can't I, I can't do the night games. I hate night. I, I, I Night games are meant for high school. Night games are Friday night lights, Saturday night lights for high schools. Night games, you never played the big games at night it, 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 back in the day. It, I mean, you wouldn't have night games, but I know TV deals and all that crap. Please put this game in the daytime next week. I'd appreciate it. Thank you so much for all the schedulers to do that. Just put us at, at 12, 12 or 3.30. Either one's fine. Preferably 12. That's all I got for this one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Ring that bell. Also, jump on over to Ruby's Rant and subscribe there. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Come on now.